welcome to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace McElia. Cataracts are one of those bad news, good news conundrums in our lives. The bad news is if we live long enough, all of us are going to get them. Cataracts affect nearly 22 million Americans age 40 and by, and by the time you're 80, more than half of all Americans have cataracts. But the good news is that cataract surgery is one of the most frequently performed and successful operations in the world today. Tonight, our guest ophthalmologist is Dr. Kathleen McCabe of the Eye Associates. Dr. McCabe was named to the Premier Surgeon 250 list of the leading innovators in premium IOL cataract surgery. And also joining us tonight is Linda Colson, one of Dr. McCabe's cataract surgery patients, who is here to tell you in her own words what the surgery was like. Welcome, Linda, and welcome back, Dr. McCabe. Thank you. Thank you so much. And in just a moment, we'll be taking your questions live for Dr. McCabe. But first, for our viewers, let's just talk about what is a cataract. Well, a cataract is actually your natural lens in the eye, and it's inside the eye behind the iris, which is the colored part of your eye. And that is the lens that helps focus light that comes into the, into the eye so that it's focused on your retina, and you can see clearly. And when we're very young, when we're born, our cataract, our natural lens, uh, which hasn't become a cataract yet, is actually clear, translucent, and very deformable, sort of like jello. And as time goes on, I like to say, rather than as we age, right. um, that cataract, those proteins become a little bit more stiff. They become a little bit more pigmented, usually a little bit yellow. And, uh, and they also become more opaque and they scatter the light instead of focusing it. Yeah. So once that lens becomes opaque and not able to do its job anymore, we call it a cataract. And that's when people come in complaining of symptoms. And I know a lot of things have changed over time as far as cataract surgery and removal. But, um, and I also know you've done a lot of cataract surgeries. So tell us, how many have you done? Well, more than 30,000 cataract surgeries, which, you know, that's really fun for me because that's a lot of people I was able to help see better. Absolutely, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes over those 30,000 surgeries. Yeah, as it well. just gets better and better. You know, it's really fun to be an ophthalmologist because it's a part of medicine where we have a lot of technology and a lot of advances, and things really do advance pretty quickly. So um, today we have lenses that are unique and new and different than when I started practice, and they're able to do things that we couldn't do before, like allow you to see distance, intermediate, and near vision, like Linda has. Uh, without glasses. And today we can do the surgery with different ways too. We can actually do the critical steps of cataract surgery with a laser, allowing us to be even more precise in the things that we do. So um, Linda, tell me a little bit about before your cataract surgery, what were some symptoms that you experienced with your eyes? Primarily, uh, I was having a hard time even while I was wearing glasses to read the small print. and. Um, Watching the computer was kind of a challenge for me as well. But I think the hardest part for me was the glare at night when I was driving. Um, my business makes me drive quite a bit and I don't always get home before dark. So um, with the halogen lights that are on the automobiles now, that was difficult as well. And you're trying to stay safe out on the road anyway. And this was, um, it was a bad feeling to not be able to see. Um, all the time while the traffic was coming towards you. And I didn't want to be home before dark all the time either. I didn't like the curfew. Right, so. yeah. the cataract curfew. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I might start talking okay. about that. That's <laughs> it's true. Yeah. yeah, because you don't really, if you don't feel comfortable with your vision at night, and that you're, the symptoms you had are very typical of cataracts mm -hmm. when they start. You know, that glare, that scattering of light when it's coming towards you, or yeah. even sunlight if it's, you know, really bothersome when you're driving into the light and you really can't see well. Right. And that can take away independence. And some patients really are afraid that if they are having difficulty driving and they admit to that to the doctor, that their license is going to be taken away and that there's nothing we can do to reverse those changes. So right. sometimes patients are a little reluctant to admit to the problems that they're having because they don't realize that it's reversible and they don't want to lose their independence. So it's good to get the word out there that, you know, normal aging of the eye doesn't mean that you should have poor vision um, without a reason for it. And frequently that is cataracts since they happen to everyone. 
And the good news, like you said at the beginning, is that it's completely reversible. Right. So once we take a cataract out, it never comes back again. That's great news. So, yeah, so I like to tell patients, you know, if you have problems with your vision, and we attribute those to cataracts, then, and, and it's significantly affecting how you function, then we should take out your cataracts because, you know, why let that get worse and worse right. when it's curable? Right. If you have cataracts and you don't drive at night and you're not up after dark for whatever reason mm -hmm. and you're happy with your vision, it's okay to keep them. But when they start to affect your lifestyle, that's the time to get rid of them. Absolutely. Well, we want to remind our viewers that our phone lines are open. So if you have a question about cataracts, cataract surgery, or any other eye-related issue, feel free to give us a call and Dr. McCabe will answer your question right here live on the show. So you just mentioned um, that everyone gets them. Is that, mm -hmm. I mean, if you live long enough, are you pretty much destined to get a cataract? You know, really those changes that happen in the lens happen very predictably. And they're just part of what happens with aging of the lens in the eye. So yeah, okay. pretty much. And often people will have cataracts that have formed and they're starting to affect their vision, mm -hmm. but we can change their glasses prescription and that allows them to still have good visual acuity uh, we, even though they have a cataract. So, you know, it's not automatic that the minute you have a cataract, you need to have it out. It's when it's visually significant. Okay. Very good. Well, we do have a caller on the line. Welcome to the show, Dell. Go ahead with your question. Oh, okay. I think we lost him. If you want to give us a phone call back, the number to call is 361 four six seven five so Linda I want to talk a little bit about um, you and before your surgery were you nervous and how how was it to make that decision to get the cataract removed no I wasn't well no I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous at all but um, I'm a registered nurse so I have been in the environment but um, they make you feel very comfortable while you're there and one of the first things that um, happen is you come in and you sign paperwork. There's always paperwork to sign. And um, they bring you into the pre-op area. They um, start an IV. They check you out really well, make sure that you're stable for the surgery. And a um, uh, lot of drops, tons of drops. They want to dilate your pupil. Makes it easier for her to look back there and see what's going on. And um, they're very good with you. They explain absolutely everything that's going to happen to you during your short stay there. Um, the anesthesia, it's come such a long ways. Um, you no longer have to have that uh, injection under the eye, which nobody would look forward to that. So now it's a topical drop that goes on your eye. And uh, in the IB, they give you a little anesthesia to make you happy. <laughs> and um, off you or go. Happier. Uh, happier. <laughs> and they take you back to the OR. And uh, of course, along the way, everybody asks you your name, your age. Which eye? Which eye? What, what are we going to do? <laughs> and uh, so you have to repeat that many times. But that's a good thing because that just makes sure that everybody's on the right page um, when you get there. And your experience in the OR itself. Uh, your responsibility as a patient is to focus on the light, um, try to sit, lay still on the gurney, and uh, just en enjoy the trip, so to speak. Um, <laughs> they're very good about, they have the, the anesthesia, um, anesthesia providers are right there with you. They hold your hand. Yeah. So if you feel like you have to sneeze, cough, or something, you just squeeze your hand real quick, and yeah. everything stops. Um, we and they don't always talk about that, but they do hold your hand. Yes, they do. That's a nice thing. And it's great. I mean, even if you if you not nervous, it's still a really good thing to know that somebody is right there. And they have right. cold hands, so you know it's yes, good. they do. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, but you're monitored throughout the whole yeah. process. Um, the surgery doesn't take long at all. Mm -hmm. uh, there's absolutely no pain involved in this. You feel a little pressure on the eye, so you know somebody's up there doing something. Mm -hmm. Um, but in just a matter of minutes, um, the process is over with and uh, everybody's happy and, and they wheel you back out to the post-op area. And um, they go through your instructions, they make sure that you have a responsible person that's going to stay with you that night, make sure that you're going to be okay, take out the IV. 
Um, they give you some glasses to wear. They're not very sexy, but they're they're nice. <laughs> yes, they they sure do the <laughs> they do the trick because they get the job done. They get the job done because you don't want to get any bugs in your eyes when you go outside. And they also give you a, an eye patch. Um, this helps you when you're napping, sleeping, that you don't accidentally sure. rub your eye. So the whole process is a very quick. If I've heard it once, I've heard it many times. It's a piece of cake. And it truly is a piece of cake, and, the, and the, everybody there takes just wonderful care of you. Very good. Well, we'll have much more um, with Linda talking about her experience going through cataract surgery and with Dr. Kathleen McCabe, McCabe of the Eye Associates in just a minute when we come back from this quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace McElia, and we are joined tonight by Dr. Kathleen McCabe of the Eye Associates. And one of her uh, patients who has undergone cataract surgery, we're talking about cataracts and surgery tonight, and our phone lines are open. So if you have a question for Dr. McCabe, feel free to give us a call at 361 4675. Now before the break, Linda, you were talking about your experience going through cataract surgery and you even likened it to being a piece of cake. Yeah. But we talked about how the anesthesiologist holds your hand during the procedure and how the nurses and everyone were just so wonderful. And I think that's really important to point out that really, it's a nice experience. It's so key to have such wonderful staff. And yeah. I just want to say how appreciative I am of the people that I work with because I can't tell you how many patients like Linda will come up afterward the next day and just say, you know, your staff were so caring, so knowledgeable, talked me through every single step. I never was worried. I always knew somebody was there with me. And, you know, that makes the difference. I can, I can do the surgery, but if it's a horrible, you know, and not friendly and caring right. environment, it's really stressful for the patient. So we kind of have the full package, I think, with the wonderful staff we have there. Absolutely. Now I know that when you get a cataract removed and you get a new lens, there are some choices involved as far as what type of lens you can have replaced, replacing the cataract. So can you tell us a little bit about the lenses and then maybe we'll talk about which one Linda has. So when we take out your natural lens, the cataract, we always put an artificial lens implant in its place. And some people will remember back in the day when we didn't, and pa patients after cataract surgery had to wear really thick glasses, right. like Mr. Magoo glasses, I yes. call them. But <laughs> it distorted everything that you looked at in the environment, and it kind of didn't look all that attractive either. So as soon as implants were developed, we've always been putting them in in order to help patients to really need less in their glasses prescription than before. So traditionally, we would put in an implant that would help you with your distance vision. It wouldn't correct your astigmatism and it wouldn't correct up close. Hmm. But today we have a number of different options to allow you to have a full range of vision, distance vision, and wear over-the-counter readers, or at least have your cataract out and then um, still need glasses, but less than before. Hmm. Okay, and we'll talk about which one, which option you chose or was chosen together with your doctor in just a minute. But we do have Kay on the line. Hi, Kay. What's your question for Dr. McCabe? Hi, Dr. McCabe. Hi, Kay. My question is, I'm 50 years old, and I've had some respiratory issues, so I've had to take steroids, and I've been told that I have the start of cataracts. I was wanting to have LASIK, but I talked to someone and they said that I wouldn't be a candidate for that. But they were talking to me about a clear lens exchange. Can, would you be able to tell me about that? Sure. Um, and like yourself, there are a lot of patients that I see who originally think what they really want is to get rid of their glasses. And they come in for a LASIK consultation where we're talking about what are the options. And they have, may have thought that, well, you know, LASIK is what I know as the thing that will allow me to do that. But if you already have a little bit of cataract, which is very common when you have a history of steroid use, um, or even if you don't and you're over the age of 40-something where you start to need those reading glasses, um, there is a solution called clear lens replacement if you don't have a cataract or cataract surgery if you do have a significant cataract. Uh, where we'll do just what we're talking about tonight. We'll take out your natural lens, we'll put an implant in that can give you a full range of vision. When LASIK really can't do that, it can't give you distance and near in the same eye after the age of 40-something. 
So clear lens replacement is a way of doing cataract surgery before your cataract's bad enough to warrant surgery for visual acuity reasons, and it's a way of giving you some independence from glasses that will go forward and be permanent and be at a full range of distance, uh, distance intermediate and near, just like Linda had. Mm -hmm. So I think Linda's gonna be able to speak a little bit to that from personal experience too. I went with the multifocal lens uh, primarily because I'd um, had to worn glasses since late 40s, maybe early 50s, and I was really tired of wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we realize how much we depend upon those glasses. The first thing in the morning, you have to reach over for your glasses before you even get out of bed. And um, going up and down stairs can be a challenge. Your depth perception is, is off a little bit. Right. Even with the progressive lens, they're, they're off a little bit. So um, primarily, though, I just wanted to get rid of the glasses. You go to the, you go to the beach, and uh, that means another pair of glasses, prescription sunglasses when you're out there. If you want to go in the water, what do you do? You take off your glasses, and then you can't see anything <laughs> while you're out there. You like to know what's going to bite you out there. So, um, it's for safety reasons. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was Shark Week just a little while. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have to worry about that anymore because I did get the multifocal That's lens, right. and I'm, I'm safe from the sharks. But um, what a wonderful lens. I mean, it truly is great. It, you can go up and down steps, not worry about anything. If you're working on something that's up high, um, you can actually see it. You can focus on it. And uh, yeah, I think some patients don't realize it's different than a bifocal. So you're absolutely. bringing up a really good point because with a bifocal or a progressive, you really have to hold things at the right angle. So you're looking through the right part of your or, lens. Or you've got your head way back. Right. And if you want to look at something up close mm -hmm. that's up above, yeah. you can't be in the right section oh. of your progressive in order to see that distance. Exactly. But it doesn't work like that. Everywhere you look, it is perfectly focused for distance intermediate and near. So there's no adjusting your head position or making sure you're looking through the right part of the lens every part is the right part. But now you only have one eye done, right? No, I have both oh, eyes Oh, you done. have both eyes two, done. Two weeks apart. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Did you have cataracts in both eyes? Mm -hmm. Okay. I had glare good. in both eyes, too. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Now, yeah. how do, would someone know if they have, I know you've said that really the time to get them removed is when they're bothering you, yes. but are they, can you see the very early stages of a cataract aesthetically? No, not, you wouldn't be able to look in the mirror and okay. see it unless it was a pretty advanced cataract. Okay. And nobody okay. would look in your eye and say, gosh, I think you have cataracts if they're early. Gotcha. Now a later cataract is obvious. Mm -hmm. It'll look like instead of a black pupil, mm -hmm. a white pupil in some instances. Right. So, but that's a very advanced cataract where you really only see light or motion or maybe count fingers. Okay. But, um, but typically, no, you wouldn't be able to look in the mirror, no. So really you're dependent on those early symptoms, mm -hmm. coming to see your doctor mm -hmm. and recognizing the symptoms early. Yeah, and a lot of patients think, you know what, I, I can't see as well as I used to see. Mm -hmm. I'm, maybe it's just because I'm getting older, mm -hmm. which that isn't the reason because people can live to you know 105 or whatever and as long as their eyes are healthy and they don't have a cataract, because usually it's been taken out already, mm -hmm. may have excellent vision. So it's not just that you're getting older, there's something going on in the eye that's causing that decrease in vision. Um, and they may just think that they need a change in their glasses, mm -hmm. and it's the cataract, it's not really a change in glasses that, that's affecting things. Very good, so now so. you said that you had them two weeks apart? Mm -hmm. Okay, what is that a normal time That's period? Typical. Okay. We sometimes uh, shorten it to a week for patients who really have a big prescription mm -hmm. because that interval when one eye sees really great without glasses and the other eye still needs a significant prescription can be very, very uncomfortable for the patient. Okay. And so we'll minimize it in those kinds of cases. Okay, so. interesting. We have Jose on the line. Hi, Jose. Welcome to the show and go right ahead with your question. Are you there? Hello? Hi, Jose. Hi. I got um cum in my eye. We can't really hear you that well. Are you there? It might help if you turn your television set volume down mm -hmm. and then ask your question. 
All right, sorry about that, Jose. Try us back later, and if you have a question for Dr. McCabe, the phone number to call is 361-4675. So I guess when it comes to deciding what type of lens is right for the patient, is that just a consulting situation? You obviously will consult with the patient, decide what's gonna be the perfect fit for them? Mm -hmm. And so there's a conversation. We'll talk about what are the things that you like to do? What are you know your visual requ requirements, which might be that they are a lot of the time on the computer, they might be reading a lot, they may be really into sports and not do a lot of near activities. If they do a lot of things at night, that would be another factor. So we actually have several different options and it is a conversation to figure out what's best for the patient. All right, great. Well, we'll have much more on cataract surgery when we come back after this quick break with Dr. McCabe from the Eye Associates. Stay with us. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace McElia, and I'm joined tonight by Dr. Kathleen McCabe of the Eye Associates and one of her patients who has gone through cataract surgery and want to just remind everyone that at the Eye Associates, you guys do a really cool thing where you have free weekly seminars about cataracts. We do, and it's kind of a nice format because patients get to come in, they hear some information about how the surgery is performed, what the choices are, and get to see a little video of the surgery itself and ask any questions that they have. Great, and so. if people are interested and they want to sign up for the seminar, they can give a call to the number on the screen, which is 1-866-865-2020, or they can go to your website, which is siteforlife.com, yes. and sign up for that, which is really great. We'd so love if you to don't have get you. your questions answered tonight, show up for the cataract seminar. Absolutely. Right? And meet Dr. Mm -hmm. McCabe, she's fabulous. <laughs> We do have a caller on the line with a question. Hi there, welcome to the show and go right ahead with your question. Barbara, are you there? Yes, this is Barbara. Hi. I was wondering, the new lens sounds absolutely wonderful, but does Medicare cover that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yes, those new the new lenses are wonderful, I agree with that. and. Unfortunately, that isn't covered by your Medicare or any other insurance. It is always an out-of-pocket expense. Um, it's considered elective. It helps you to be free from your glasses. It does help you function better, so you'd think that they would cover it, but it is not covered by your insurance. That is an additional fee. Thank you so much for your question, and we have another caller on the line. Hi, BJ. Go ahead with your question. Hi, I've been diagnosed with cataracts for quite some time now. They were in the early stages about two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I've just been uh, checked by another doctor, and um, because my vision has changed drastically for the third time within this year, mm -hmm. I've just turned 63. Um, he suggested that I get the cataract surgery, and I asked him on a scale where I'm at, and he said on a scale from one to four, I'm at two. Mm -hmm. He said you can either spend the money and get new glasses or get the cataract surgery. It's up to you. If I'm in the early stages, what would your suggestion be to wait or get glasses again? Yeah, I, I have this conversation a lot because patients want to know if it's bad enough. And you kind of have that average cataract that we see a lot of patients who end up deciding whether or not they want to have it done. Kind of a grade 2, grade 3 cataract is where most patients in the United States are when they have their cataract out. And what I tell patients is, if you're functioning well, you like your vision, you're happy with how you see right now, um, then there's no rush to do your cataract surgery because it doesn't hurt the health of your eye in any way. However, if you're not happy with your vision, if you have any symptoms like difficulty reading or glare or halos at night, there's no reason to wait to have your surgery because those symptoms are only going to worsen with time and when we take your cataract out, that's curative and you'll never have it again. So if you're having trouble, have it out. If you're not, then you can keep it as long as you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. And I know, you know, Linda, you said it really affected your life tremendously. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about what time I'm coming home. Right. Uh, I can stay out past sundown. So after sundown, <laughs> we'll find Linda out partying somewhere. Exactly. Just so real quick before we go, yeah. we only have about a minute left, but why did you choose the Eye Associates for your procedure? Well, I was a patient there, and so I knew the Eye Associates. I knew their philosophy. Um, they always do what's right for the patient. It was written all over. 
and uh, they proved it. Every staff member there takes really good care of you. They truly do. It's like you're their mom because <laughs> they treat you really well. And I did attended one of Dr. McCabe's um, seminars or oh. lectures and got to watch her in action on the video. And it is nice to go to the seminars because there are so many people there that a question that you may not think to ask, somebody else is going to ask. So it's like networking. You really get a lot of good information at one setting. And that's, that, that's what made me make that decision. And I thank you for it. Yeah. And well, thank you for the eye associates. Pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And just a quick re reminder, we want to show that graphic one more time. If you didn't get your question answered tonight or if you have more, uh, more things that you're wondering about, the eye associates is having a free cataract seminar with Dr. McCabe this Thursday, August 29th at 4 p.m. And if you want to sign up, make a reservation, just call the number that you see right there on your screen, one 866 865-2020. I think that's a really great resource that you all provide for the community. Yeah, it's fun to do too. So we have a good time. And those are every single week. So every you don't week. do them every week, but they're every single week. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Linda, for sharing your story. Thank you again, Dr. McCabe. You always have tons of great information. So everyone have a great night from all of us here at SNN. See you next week.